Thank you guys. Keep it going for Jacob Wilson. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you go to Anna for putting this on. I'll get right into it. I had a very excited friend come right up to me. She said, hey Mark, I'm going to see Smash Mouth. I said, hey former friend, I'm sorry. Are you being punished? She didn't have much of a response to that. Uh, then she said, no, don't worry. Sugar Ray is the headliner. I said, I can see this be adding insult to injury tour, summer 2015. She kept going, no, 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 you don't understand. Smash Mouth is my boyfriend's favorite band. I said, oh, wow. There's a lot of red flags in relationships, uh, financial troubles, drug problems, family history. Finding out that your significant other's favorite band is Smash Mouth is the safest way, relatively speaking, to find out this is not a serious relationship. She kept going on and on with that, and uh, yeah, finally I was just like, look, hey now, you're a rock star. You gotta do what you gotta do to get that show on, all right? I don't know why I'm judging. I don't like being a musical hipster or snarky, but I was like, all right, clearly this is a musical cry for help. I went up to her boyfriend and I said, hey man, um, you remember when we were like 10, 11, and we all like picked our favorite band? Um, you're allowed to change that. We are like 25 now. Uh, your MySpace page will not get deleted. Uh, also, Smash Mouth isn't like the Bloods and the Crips. You don't have to stay. You can leave anytime you want. No repercussions. On the list of top five bands who are not like the Bloods and Crips, Smash Mouth is always in the top ten. You know what to do. Anyways, uh, music's kind of funny how you qualify different things. I was in a bar recently watching my buddy's band, and there was a drunk 60-year-old man who said he had 18 drinks that day. I know that because he said that about 27 times within the span of 30 seconds. Middle of my band's, uh, my buddy's band's break, he stops and goes, Hey man, I just want to let you know, you're doing good. I've seen Alice Cooper and everybody. So in poker terms, he kind of just tossed the blind and said, You know what, I'm at a dive bar, 25 people in Cincinnati. I'm going to go ahead and push all these chips in. Establish my musical credentials here. I just love the fact that he paused for a second, and then he actually had to think about that. Like, he's like, okay, I can't start off with everybody. i got to give them a point of reference. So, what do we got here? Alice Cooper, that's at the top of the thing. Original shock rock hero of the 1970s. And uh, who else, logically? Every single musical act that's ever existed. That's on my resume. You're doing good. I have a real bad fear I'm going to end up being that guy. I have a bad fear I am that guy at 24. I do whatever I can for my health. I uh, stopped at the doctor's office, asked my doctor if smoking pot through an apple counted as a full serving of fruit in my diet. He told me to go shove one up my ass, mumbled something about I didn't practice meds for uh, 12 years just to take shit from a guy who looks like a human pizza roll tripping on acid. I said, Doc, it kind of hurt my feelings, uh, a little unprofessional as well. So, of course, I took the science into my own hands. I'm clearly qualified for that. Turns out you don't get a lot of nutritional value, but if you smoke through a Granny Smith, it can do wonders for your arthritis. <laughs> and Granny and I have never been closer. You've got to make those last years count. If you want to make your grandmother feel special, make sure she's the only one in a nursing home who has a Grateful Dead sticker on her oxygen tank. <laughs> That is going to make those last years feel pretty good. It's more like an oxygen cocktail, if I have to be completely honest. Oh, boy, where am I going with this? Um, I don't like any ambiguity in science. You know, Pink Floyd on an oxygen tank, you know what's up. But ambiguity, I saw a car recently on the back of it was a bumper sticker. It said, uh, not a liberal. I was like, yeah, it looks like a car to me, man. Didn't think there was any political persuasion. Didn't think car shows were political rallies. And uh, for what it's worth, when you have a don't tread on me and a Confederate flag decal, not a liberal is kind of implied at that point. Not really needs to be. But I'll tell you the biggest one, folks, is uh, I see it on the back of garbage trucks all the time. It always says, uh, don't follow too closely. And to this day, I still don't know if they're talking about the truck or the major life decisions of the guy who's driving it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did I say guy? Clearly I haven't been on Tumblr in a while. You ladies are just as capable of being a drug-addicted deadbeat as any man out there. If you have to fight the patriarchy one dirty diaper and chicken wing bone at a time, I am an ally, goddammit. Do what you gotta do. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm gonna get out of here.